Give your dungeon a purpose! Welcome to my channel. I focus on tabletop role-playing games, video games, and science fiction. And dungeoned in Dungeons and Dragons shouldn't just be a hole in the ground that is filled with monsters. There should actually be a reason for the dungeon to exist. Now, occasionally you'll have the dungeon created by the mad wizard who went weird and decided to build a dungeon underneath. Okay, those do exist, and that's a reason, but that's not the only reason. And I'm going to cover a few interesting topics. Have you heard of the Maginot Line? or the Siegfried line. But the Maginot line still exists. There's still lots of it left because it was built by the French after World War I and before World War II to uh, discourage the Germans from invading. It didn't work. They went around the Maginot line, but the Maginot line still exists. It's a massive fortification, lots of concrete and steel, that exists to this day. It's a massive defensive uh, encampment that the French built and have abandoned. But think about in the ancient world somebody building a massive defense. You could argue that the Great Wall of China was to defend against invaders and just like that you could build some sort of uh, fortifications that may have sunk underground now or been buried uh, over the eons of time and its net was once abandoned and now it's repurposed perhaps by new inhabitants. That gives a purpose for your um, fortification. Actually I did this in the world of Tiglath. I had a keep. There were actually was it five or six, I can't remember, six in a fortification that um, most of them were, they were attacked and destroyed. One was left and it was on, only partially above ground. So then that's one approach. Another, another reason for it is it's some sort of mine. There's a mine in Poland, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce its name, that was a salt mine. And it existed for a long time people carving salt out of it and they made sculptures and various things inside that. Though I'll put the links down in the description. But you run into mines. Any kind of mine, they look at the the mines in Egypt where they were copper. They were mining out copper I believe was there until the copper uh, the veins of copper ran out and you have run into other places where they've mined for various things for silver and gold and they can mine until they don't find any more of that but that leaves something behind you've dug a hole out that stays there forever so now it's repurposed the other thing to remember in the hobbit um, the kingdom under the mountain was a mine that's how they they dug came to the great wealth of gold and was at the heart of the mountain was a stone that they found while they're digging there and in Lord of the Rings remember that was the mines of Moria that they that was originally a mine that the dwarves quote dug too deep but the um, mines are an interesting place where things come about because other things can take them over when they're abandoned and no longer used there's an interesting Another interesting use, which is sort of a bandit hideout and or a speakeasy. Now, the DeSoto Caverns, I'll put a link to that, they actually at one point in time was a speakeasy. It was a place where they hid bootleg booze and you, anything that's prohibited, whatever reason it's prohibited in your kingdom or whatever, the they people will try and smuggle it in and they often need a place to keep it when they've smuggled it in and stored and then perhaps even sold it so that the speakeasy was a bar when bars were illegal so in prohibition. So the DeSoto Mines was an example of that. Then you also have temples. There's the underground temples. Now there's the Lupercale. I I'll put a link down into it. They they discovered that fairly recently. It was a temple that was buried in, in I believe in Rome. 
and they sent a probe in to take pictures of it, but it's, it's an entire temple underground. Now, it originally was above ground, but it got buried over the years, so archaeology is there. Now, if that gets discovered by some creatures, that gives an uh, another reason why that's there. So and that, that leads into, you know, the houses and cellars that have been buried and entire cities have been buried. There's things that get lost over the eons of time. And you have Pompeii and Herculaneum, which were buried under ash, volcanic ash and, and so on. You could always create an entire city like Pompeii or Herculaneum that's been buried by ash and now there's still things living down under there or have it dug entrances into it. Then you um, have those that were specifically dug underground. Most of these are not specifically dug for that, but then you have the catacombs of Rome and the various catacombs, but that's a, that's a fairly mundane and ordinary thing that a people have done. But going back to the concept of the minds of Moria, and that is the idea of a way to get from point A to point B quicker. In essence, it's a tunnel. But the tunnel is not just as we see today, a straight through tunnel. Because it could take years or even decades to tunnel from point A to point B through a mountain using the tools that you had, though arguably that there are <clears throat> interesting ways with magic. If you can do um, uh, stone to mud and then <laughs> you clean out the mud, a uh, rock to rock to mud or whatever it's you could do uh, various things like that and you could excavate fairly quickly if you wanted to do if you're using magical spells but if you're actually mining things out you could um, it would take a long time and while you're doing that the idea would be as eventually you'd start building places once you got in far enough, it would be take too much time for people to come from the outside all the way to go to the inside to the work spot. So you would build places for them to sleep and eat and so on. And you would eventually build out living quarters and so on as you're tunneling. And the idea would be that, say, you're tunneling through a mine. I mean, through, through a mountain to get from one side to the other for various commerce reasons. And that may, when you're through, it may not be just a straight path but it becomes a trade route through this so this is a this is a possibility of creating a fairly elaborate trade route system that is as interesting as above ground but it's actually going through a mine in your classic dungeon fashion so don't just dig a hole in the ground i've done that i've created dungeons that are just holes in the ground filled with monsters and sometimes treasure but what happens is that you can give purpose to your dungeons. Where did they come from? Why are they there? And it's not just some mad, insane wizard doing something weird. You can actually give them a reason for existing or a reason that they had at one time. For example, the Maginot Line has no reason for existing today. The only reason it exists today is it takes, there's nothing of value left inside it. But it's a, a massive concrete and steel structure underground, reinforced concrete. The other interesting one is if, I'll let you look it up if you want to Google, it's the Flak Tower in Berlin, which they couldn't destroy. They tried. It was, a, it was built by, uh, during the, height of World War II by the Nazi regime. And it was built so sturdily that they could not destroy it. It's made of re extremely reinforced concrete. And it's massive and that structure is still there. And there have been a few interesting people who now, it's been so many years that they start going back in and looking at some of it, but it actually exists. By the way, if you're interested, there was an interesting thing about, um, I think it was uh, some of the cities under the, uh, or under cities, there was one on, I think, of the History Channel that talked about Berlin. And Berlin uh, uh, in World War II was flat. There were no hills. It's basically a recovered swamp 
for it was a swamp at one point in time. But the hills in Berlin now that are there are actually buried. Something that was buried because it was built by the Nazis during World War II. So that gives you an example of things that were deliberately buried in relatively recent history that are there. Another purpose for your dungeon is to act as a sewer. You pipe all your effluvium down into some underground chambers and let it just um, mature down there, shall we say. It um, is an approach of getting rid of various things uh, out of your city or town or wherever that um, gets rid of it. But this brings up an interesting discussion also because you could be piping other things that you don't want down there. What I'm talking about is that uh, we've built and but have not yet used the Yucca Mountain Nuclear Repository. We put it was designed for storing high level radioactive waste. Well, if you're dealing with a fantasy world, what is your most dangerous waste? Well, perhaps your magical wastes. Think about that. So you create a high level repository for handling extremely dangerous magical wastes. This gives you a whole bunch of interesting things to think about putting down in there. Why would you want to go down in, in down into this thing? Well, perhaps you've been hired to take a cartload of magical waste and put it deep down underground where it can't get out or do various things in there. Or maybe you want somebody else wants you to retrieve something that's been put down there and stored there for many uh, millennia or something like that. So you can add magical waste into your uh, purpose for your dungeon. That gives an, uh, that would give it a really odd possibilities of what kind of creatures and things would come out of there. Uh, that could truly be a nightmare scenario like um, uh, Silent Hill or some of the other horror genre type things. So I hope you enjoyed my video. Thank you for watching. I look forward to learning what you think about this video. Let me know in the comments below. I appreciate all your comments. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give me a thumbs down. I appreciate both forms of feedback. If you're new here and would like to subscribe, you can click on the icon on the left. If you're interested, there's more content on the right.